Hello, everyone. All of you lovely, lovely RS3 players. So lovely. today... Yes, you are lovely. So today, we will go over what I... Or what we should expect for from the May 14th, 2024 RuneScape 3 roadmap. And what I'm Nothing. kind of looking for... No, 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 no. We should expect... <laughs> At least a little bit of something. So we're, we're we're gonna talk about what to expect first. So you know, actually, a better way for me to do this is I made a prediction for I think it was like the March stream that they did. Let me pull that back. Let me pull that up. Okay, so this is what I wrote down for March twenty twenty four. So I wrote that we should expect the Necromancy Matriarch boss, the combat beta uh, combat beta changes going live, which were, which is now like the combat you know update in March that was in March. Necromancy Part Two, additional one twenty skill increases. So. I think that we haven't gotten the boss yet, but you know, it it, it is assuredly going to come out this month. So, I think we can say that we got the Necromancy Next Ma <laughs> the Necromancy Rex Matriarch boss. We also got the combat beta changes going live, the combat PVM whatever update. We did not get Necromancy Part 2 and we did not get any additional 120 uh increases. So, I would say Jagex, they, so, and I, I have this in the section of the absolute bare minimum, so they didn't even accomplish their the bare minimum, they accomplished half of the bare minimum, which is, you know, yeah, I guess it, it could be better than nothing, like none of the bare minimum, but it's definitely not great, it's pretty bad, not gonna lie. For the whole first six months of this year, they did next to nothing. Okay, uh, they pretty much did a lot of uh, cash grabs, a lot of a lot of treasure hunter stuff, a lot of cosmetics locked behind treasure hunter. They didn't do fresh world, fresh start worlds too, which uh, you know maybe it may, might be a good thing for uh, people, a lot of people. They didn't do another. Uh, they didn't announce an another game yet. Uh, they they did absolutely none of these uh, updates that I put in the bottom, which were like very good changes. But I think I'll leave them there for now. So let me change this. I'll change this title to "What to Expect for May 2024." So we can remove the the Rex Matriarch boss, the Necromancy one, because. That is assuredly coming. We can remove the combat beta. Necromancy part 2, I still think, should come. And 120 skill should come. Now, there is an argument to be made that the Undale thing, or un un Undale, Ungale thing added might be the only thing that Jagex adds to Necromancy. Which, if that is the case, I guess that was part two, but, you know, that's, like, extremely minor content. It's literally, they just added a new ritual spot that's a little bit different. And, like, the ring. That's... It's very light. Very light. I, I, I wouldn't even say, you know, the Requiem of the Dragon quest or whatever was even super necromancy-related. So... I would not, me personally, I would not put that as a Necromancy Part 2 update. That's just like a, a light update they added. They didn't do any 120 increases like I already said. So is there anything else that I should expect Jagex to implement in the next... We don't, we don't really know how long the roadmap is, but I'm going to assume it's until the end of the year. So I'm going to say this, I'm going to predict what's going to happen from, you know, the second half of 2024. I think there still should be Necromancy Part 2. 
there, sh there should be some 120 increases that will lead to more content. I think I do want to add on here, just because Mod Sponge was very mo vocal on a lot of live streams, mentioning that he wanted to add more difficult content, uh, PVM content into the game. I think it is pretty reasonable to expect Jagex to implement I don't I don't I don't know if it's going to be like a whole new boss cuz it probably is not going to be to the scale. But I think we should be able to expect more PVM related content such as I, I'll, I'll, I'll say more difficult... Oh, good. <laughs> Almost put something bad there. Difficult Slayer revamps to older bosses, maybe. You know, maybe like some sort of hard mode or enraged system like Mod Ramen was talking about with Solak. Something like that. I think this is pretty reasonable to expect. Slayer's trash for me. You're 109 killing. Okay, right. Um Yeah, I don't I don't think they're going to add any new changes for like the leveling of Slayer, maybe if they add I mean if they add a new Slayer task, I guess that could be a change for that. Uh anyways, I think this is pretty reasonable expecting more con PVM content. Uh I'm not sure what else I am, would be ex you know, like wh when I what what I what I put in this expected category is something that is literally what I'm expecting. Like, if they don't do it, I would be disappointed in them. If... <laughs> this honestly might be the only thing... Th these three things might be the only thing to expect because Jagex is so... They're so... Lazy this year. Or, okay, no, lazy is a bad word. Um, I'll say they're so low budget this year on RS3. If you guys look at the uh, hiring, uh, you know, the uh, Jagex careers page. Let me see, actually. I probably still have that saved somewhere. Jagex.com. Oh, I don't, but I can just find it. Careers. View listings. Last time I looked at this was like a couple weeks ago. They, they were not hiring anybody for RS3. And right now, if you look at all their positions and their related departments... You know, it says, like, publishing, commercial, analyst, strategic, strategy, and business development. This is basically just, like, this. these two jobs are fully designed to how do I make Treasure Hunter more profitable? That That's literally it. Old school devs, because they're dumping a ton of stuff into old school. Okay, you know what? These guys could also be working on their unannounced game. Unannounced survival game, apparently. No more IT, old school, unannounced game, speculative applications. So just the, the speculative applications is just like, I don't, I don't even know what the frick that means. But uh, yeah, so they're, they are hiring nothing into the development to RS3 still. So that's why I am not expecting much from this roadmap. This is literally all I'm expecting. Again... Uh, I, I might be, I should probably change the second title from Jagex announces another awfully time cra cash grab. I, I, I don't think they will do this. I'm just gonna remove these chances because like, it doesn't make any sense. Will, I, I, I don't think they're gonna announce, you know, they're not gonna announce a treasure hunter in the the roadmap that doesn't make any sense or the cosmetics they might still announce a fresh start world 2 and they might an announce the open world survival game as some sort of you know cash grabby game which it probably will be it's kind of strange how neglected rs3 is considering it is the milking cow yes i agree I think it is a very poor decision of them to invest so much into old school when the rate of return, I would say, from old school is much smaller than RS3. Not saying that they won't get any returns from, from old school. I think they will get returns from it. 
because I'm sure there are quite a decent number of play, uh, players playing the game right now, but they, they can't really spend money into the game outside of subscriptions. So if, the, if they are going to make a large return, they have to get a large number of players to resubscribe and play the game on old school. They can't get any extra sources of revenue, such as from Treasure Hunter or cosmetics that are in RS3. But, you know, uh, I'm not a financial analyst, so that's just my opinion. I think it is... I have a very biased opinion, but I think it is a not a, it is not a good idea to neglect RS3, because if you lose, like, most of the players and they don't come back, you lost... You know, you lose the whales. They they are they are not coming back. You know, whales and old school are basically you know they the whales on old school compared to the whales on RS three are like not even remotely the same. Do you think they will pick up the production of new staff and overall uh, take the quality of RS three more seriously anytime soon? Uh, honestly, I, I don't think there's any evidence that shows that Jagex is actually planning on giving RuneScape 3 big updates. I think they definitely should and could do it, but the, the, just like what we looked at with the career hirings and stuff... And then, you know, I, I, I guess we'll, 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 we'll truly find out during this roadmap. But long story short, I'm not expecting much from this roadmap. I think, I think what this roadmap is going to have is just literally just a bare minimum. This, these, three, these three things that I mentioned up here is literally just these, these three things they're going to mention. And they're, they're, they're going to call that the updates of 2024. Which is uh, pretty pretty sad for, you know... If you think about the amount of content that Jagex has added in, to RS3 in previous years, you know, there are years like two, uh, 2020, what, 2022, when they added all the God Wars 3 stuff. You know, there's like so much content that they, they could add, and they probably are not going to do very much. It makes you wonder what the lifespan of RS3 could be. Yeah. Um, it, it, it really just depends on Jagex. They they could make the lifespan of RS3 go very very long if they hire if they actually take the money from Treasure Hunter and hire devs or they could just try to milk the game and just kill it like they're like they're currently doing right now because you know players are not just gonna sit here and get milked for nothing in return. That people are gonna leave. That's just that's literally an inevitability. So it's it's literally ultimately all up to them. Like we unfortunately do not have much control over that. Maybe if you guys have been paying attention with Hell Divers, if you guys saw the Hell Divers drama with with uh you know them forcing all the people on Steam to make a PlayStation account or something to play the game, and then they rioted so hard that Sony actually reverted the change. So something like that is actually very, very, is very, very good for them, of course, like the Helldivers community, but also to, to, you know, gamers in general, because it really shows that the community does have a say in, in, in the games that you play. If enough people of a game thinks something should be this way then it should be this way you know there's a saying the customer is always right and yeah you individually if you have a grievance with a game and you think it's bad but everyone else doesn't agree with you then then you're not right but if everyone agrees with you then you are right so if everyone thinks that rs3 is heading in a bad direction and you just stop playing the game then you know it very well could Make Jagex reevaluate what they're doing with RuneScape 3. I I think they I think Jagex as a publicly traded company has a fiduciary responsibility to try and make money from the game. So if 
if we just all stop spending money on the game, they should be legally required to try and at least, you know, do something with the game. They can't just they can't just they can't just delete RuneScape 3. That that that's like that's like borderline criminal. Cause, you know, investors and shareholders into Jagex, if they just delete RuneScape 3, Jagex as a company is, you know, their value is gonna just go go from like whatever their stock is now to like 40% of what it is, just only on old school. That that's that's my guess because I'm pretty sure RS3 generates them at least half their revenue. Around half the revenue. That's my guess. I'm sure, you know, people, if you look up their uh, revenue earnings and stuff like that, you can get a more specific number. But if, if they just deleted RuneScape 3, that would be absolutely horrible for their company. The reason why they're trying to milk RuneScape 3 right now is because they, they're trying to get away with doing very little content updates to RS3. And they're trying to see, oh, can we still get the same amount of money from these these stupid RuneScape 3 players? Can we can, can we keep putting all these treasure hunter players and milk them for uh, sorry treasure hunter promotions and just milk them for all this money while while providing no content? Well, you see, if we still give them a ton of money to their treasure hunter schemes while they give us nothing in return, well then well that's the new standard. The new standard is RuneScape three play the RuneScape three players just love to eat dirt. And so we will just keep feeding them more dirt. We will not give them content because they will still they will still pay us money for eating dirt. So the only realistic thing that we can do for them to change is to stop eating dirt and don't give them money. That's uh, you know that was a, that was a pretty sh that was a pretty long tangent, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that that's what I think about the current state of RS3. What is their ticker? I, 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 don't, I don't know what that means. You might have to rephrase that. Anyways, so... I think for this bottom section I have, where Jagex announces good unprecedented, change, unprecedented changes, is this is a list of things that I think would be absolutely great for the game. If they announced the player avatar rework, that is the, you know, the, 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 the sprite of your character here. You know, when I zoom in really hard, I look absolutely hideous. Like, what is this character? I, I look like a freaking serial killer. I'm just scary looking. Oh wait, I'm, I'm hiding. Uh, let me, let me, let me, let me undo my notepad. If I zoom all the way in, my character just looks terrifying. And that's at literally every character. You zoom, you zoom in close enough, and the guy that you're staring at is freaking scary looking. So yeah, they need to update the player avatar. Love the pants. Yeah, there's some cosmetics on here that are not bad, but most of it could definitely be modernized. So yeah, an update. That update would immediately bring back RuneScape 3, at least in a lot of good graces. Good graces for a lot of people. Uh, I think a PvP revamp would be exceptionally good for the game. I've mentioned this in so many, uh, you know, streams that I've been in, a lot of talks, like in my talk show on YouTube that you guys maybe have heard, that a PvP is an integral part of any multiplayer game because PvP is just a very popular thing that people love doing. So if, if, if a game just doesn't have any PvP... That is a large portion of players that would play this game for PvP that are not playing it because there's no PvP scene. So if you had a PvP scene in RuneScape 3, there would be a lot of people playing the game for PvP. Uh, I think new raids. There's been no raids for like nine years now or something. This would be a huge game changer for PvMers. A lot of people, and a lot of people, you know, they play games like Final Fantasy, World of Warcraft... You know, like, whatever other games, like EVE Online and, like, Lost Ark, they play them for the raids, and we don't have any raids. We have we have a nine-year-old raids that is extremely power crept that you can do with, like, three people now. But that, I wouldn't really say that's challenging content for 2024. Clan updates would be huge. A lot of people in this game are in a clan. I think most people in the game love clans. I don't know why they've neglected clans for so long. 
they make if they make clans have more things to do in them, it'd be great for the game. Everyone would love it. Um, and this party finder group system is this another addition to PVM? Anything to you know, like a system that if I wanted to do raids, let's say I I open up the I open up this grouping system, right? And I I open up liber liberation of Mazcab. It doesn't just join me a queue and just plot me into some random group of people. I can select, okay, I want to be the base tank. I check off base tank. I hit join queue, and then people looking for base tank will I'll fill them in. Or I'm looking for DPS. Uh, and then and if I make a group, I can say, okay, I want one DPS. I want th I want five. D uh, sorry, I want one base tank. Tank, five dps i want you know one pet tank or sorry two pet tanks you know something like that and i hit i hit enter and then it just fills in a much more organized system a much more organized version of the grouping system would make pvming at least group pvming a lot more uh easy to do with random people yeah i'm not sure what else? You can live without it. I'm assuming you're talking about PvP. And yeah, I, I'm, I know most people in RuneScape 3 right now don't care about PvP, which I totally respect that. If you, if you don't care about PvP, just don't interact with it. But what I'm saying is there are a lot of people that that either quit RuneScape 3 because they, they destroyed PvP, or there's people that would be interested in... in looking at runescape 3 if if there was a pvp scene because there are a lot of people that enjoy playing pvp games you know like moba players and like you know there's there's big pvp seeds and like wow and all of that stuff so you're 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 just deliberately deleting an entire section of players in this game that could exist but don't because you just chose to neglect pvp even though there is like a base structure of pvp in rs3 which is just, you know, sad to see. Yeah, let me think. Is there anything else on here that would be really nice? I mean, there's, like, small stuff that I think would be a big improvement for PvP, such as being able to sell back Thalor items that you get from, like, castle, castle wards and stuff that you can use to buy stuff in the Thalor store. Because there's, there's a lot of cool stuff in the Thalor store, like the patch bombs. Let me see if I can show you guys. While I'm here, uh, if I just go to like Falador, there's one. Oops, I ran into the wall. Now look, look at all these cool things in this in the store here. You can buy clue scrolls. I'm sure a ton of ton of cluers would love just being able to spend their stuff on these clues. Uh, oh, there's stars. You can buy bonus XP. There's, uh, VIP tickets. There's these patch bombs that you can use for, uh, instantly harvesting herbs. There's a lot of, there's a lot of cool stuff here. And they can even add more stuff, you know, to the store. That'll, that'll promote people to, to play minigames, which is, you know, another thing to revive, to revive another portion that's just long been dead in, in RuneScape 3. More, the more variety people can, you know, they can play in this game, the more they will love, they will enjoy play it, playing it. Variety is king. Can't just do the same thing over and over again. Oh, you can't see? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was just showing uh, in the skilling section the uh, the Slayer VIP tickets, the patch bombs for farming. Um, you know, all these like random gloves and stuff that might give you more herbs. In the misc, there's like the clue scrolls, the XP stars, you know, the Silverhawk stuff, no paper. But yeah, let me uh, let me just think. Is there anything else that would be really really good for RuneScape three right now? I would say a new skill, but we already did a new skill, so that's... <laughs> we're on cooldown for a new skill. We're on cooldown for at least, like, two more years, so no new skill. Jax is less than their 1%. Unless revenue falls off cliff, they aren't going to pump money our way. I mean, they... they. I... I, 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 don't, I don't think that's... I don't think that's correct, because Jagex is... They just bought Jagex. I don't know why they would buy Jagex, not try to make money off of it, and just delete it. That that doesn't really make sense. 
they would just sell it to someone else for a lower price. And you know, who knows? Maybe if we riot so much, if RS3 just generates like 10% as much revenue as they did last year, we just all collectively say, do not spend money on RuneScape 3, do not renew your Premier Club, do not buy membership, and they just lose so much money. They might even sell it back to like Andrew Gower or something, you know? He has a company now. If, if you guys love RuneScape 3, do not give them more money right now. Giving them more money is the worst possible thing you could do. If you love RuneScape 3 and they're just feeding you dirt, you just do not accept the dirt. What if they delete RuneScape 3 and refocus on the old school? Well, the problem is old school is not going to sustain themselves. So it's not going to sustain their team. Old school does not generate... The reason why old school has been able to survive so long without having microtransactions is because they're being subsidized from the microtransactions from RuneScape 3. If RuneScape 3 didn't exist, Jagex would probably just add microtransactions to old school. And then old school would, would subsequently also die. You know, I kind of thought that there would be more for me to, to, to want to add into this game. But right now, I mean, this is, this is pretty broad. Like, I can't really think of anything else that would be really good for the game. But hey, uh, you know, you guys in the comments, and you know, in the video in the future, let me know. Let me know in the comments what else you want Jagus to add. You know, you never know. Maybe uh, they'll stumble across this video and check and see. But, yep, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. And we will be live streaming, or I will be live streaming their live stream on May 14th. So we will watch it live. Catch you there.